everybody. Um, first of all, uh, I want to introduce the speakers. Um, Lena Hurst-Massen is sitting over there. She's not speaking today. She's just observing. But uh, is a uh, director of Museum Skanderborg uh, and a partner in the Eastgate project. Lena Mollerup is a uh, museum, uh, museum inspector at um, Abbey, which is the case uh, where we, we're going to present it from today, and uh, also Museum Skanderborg. And uh, then Marianne Poor, director of tourism, this is Scannable. And I am uh, Nina Baxby and I'm the project manager at uh, the Eastgate Concept. Um, where we are, just where we talk from, is uh, in Denmark, in the Lake Land, uh, near the biggest city near, is uh, uh, almost just in the coastal capital. Okay. Well, shortly, uh, just I want to tell a little bit about uh, Eastgate as a concept. It combines uh, landscape storytelling with uh, world history interpreted by modern art. Um, and has existed since uh, 2014 and done several projects. And in each project we always have um, the same elements, but on different sites. We always have uh, excavations or places where they've been excavated. Uh, we have art in situ and we have uh, audience and visitors the tourism perspective. And also in all projects, uh, we work with the, the process, one big event, and then the event is always temporary, and then we work more permanently, uh, developing or in people's mindset. Uh, and the case we're gonna talk about today is uh, rebuilding the Abbey Eastgate 2017. And also, just shortly, because now we comment on, on uh, the archaeologists taking things away from the site and putting it in boxes, the main uh, thing for Eastgate is to bring uh, the story back to the sites because we're always site specific. So, with art and uh, people involvement, bring the story back to the site and give them the story. Yeah. The site is a monastic uh, ruin. It was excavated in the 1930s and the 1970s. Um, as you can see on this, this slide, there's hardly anything. Or there's a little bit of a column left, but uh, there's not a lot uh, above ground. And this, we're actually walking around in the ruin park as an archaeological excavation. Um, what we know it would have been like is uh, very monumental because we have a sister monastery where uh, the building is preserved. Um, today, it house, uh, the site house um, an open air um, ruin park and museum, and this is as a six to uh, seven, seven, seven thousand half year because we're only open half year. Uh, the purpose of making this um, um, <coughs> event was uh, to create an illusion or and also to uh, uh, create an attention and awareness of the site because we are in the process of developing uh, the attraction. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is a cardboard installation uh, that we were presented by the, um, the artist Olivia Rosette. And the, the next one. Yes, sorry. We had an event the six days in May last year. Uh, it consisted of uh, workshops and uh, event where we, we built, it, built the, the cardboard uh, monastery together and also the um, demolition of the cardboard uh, element. It all had to be part of or the, the erection and the demolition had to, uh, to it, always, it was supposed to stand for 24 hours. Um, 250 people helped creating the cardboard in four days before the event, and uh, then we had the, the erection. It uh, took place in, in uh, one day. We didn't know how many people would turn up. We, uh, we got the, the message out through the, the internet, through the local, uh, yeah, all the local channels. Um, we expected somewhere between 500 and 5,000 people to come and help us. We were all relying on uh, help from volunteers. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't build this ourselves. <laughs> so it was uh, a community project. Thanks. We're just going to show a small movie uh, from the last left. Uh, 
It weighs over 1.6 tons, so you had to lift uh, approximately 20 kilos per person or something. So it was only doable people staying and helping. So it's just, just a short, short moment. <laughs> and really, really scary as well. <laughs> It's not finished yet. They're yeah. still in the process, process of put, putting things in. So, as I guess you can almost feel in your stomachs, this was really a, a moment in time, unforgettable, not only for us, but for the four and a half thousand people that were there. At that time, as Nina said, the sculpture weighed more than a ton, and a part of that was three and a half kilometers of gutter tape. <laughs> Just imagine. Um, what we experienced, what we all experienced, was that at that time, co creation really meant something. It may be a buzzword, but this is co-creation. We had lots of volunteers working uh, with the installation. As Lena said, it was a week before, uh, so we had lots of different volunteers, young, old, retired people. But what we found out and what we saw was that there was the formal volunteers, volunteers that we almost know, the school kids and the good friends of the uh, monastery. But the audience here also spontaneously became volunteers. When it stood there, at the end of the day, I guess that at least a thousand people had touched the cardboard boxes from when they arrived, Plano, during the workshops, raising it, and when it finally collapsed. What you saw when it collapsed was that the audience, especially the young ones, the very young ones, would run up to the installation and jump in it. <laughs> and we, we, we relied on that because we needed to recycle the cardboard. So we had to make a plan again. And I have one picture of people like ants carrying in a row all these cardboard boxes to the right recycle thing. So co-creation became for real, real time. We also gained what was the purpose of awareness and attention. We, speaking about external branding, it really worked. We were out on all the platforms and channels and national TV. So there was a lot of fuss about the monastery, the museum, and the area. Uh, internally, uh, there, was, there was branding in the sense of, for example, pride. I think everyone that touched the cardboard boxes at the end were very proud. Um, so what we also gained was uh, a lot of new owners. We so was so that the old ownerships were refreshed uh, by this event, but we also had great new uh, and broader ownership. Um, so more ambassadors, more attention, more external and internal branding, all leading up to that the, the monastery and museum uh, is now undergoing a great development plan, which has just, uh, just been decided. So now we're looking forward to the monastery shining even more and, and the whole area through the monastery shining. And that is because of the volunteers, the locals, all the new ambassadors involved in this competition. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.